This is the new, very popular DJI Pocket 3 camera along with the DJI Mic 2. And they both have a lot of really cool features, many of which are not at all obvious when you first power on this camera. So in this video, I'm gonna share 17 tips and tricks so you can get the most out of the DJI Pocket 3 camera. So the first trick is how to turn the camera on. There are actually a couple ways to do this. First, you can just flip the camera's screen like that and it'll turn on, and then just flip it like this to turn it off. Alternatively, you can also go down to the red record button and just press to hold to turn it on, and again, press to hold to turn it off. Now, if you want to power the camera on and immediately have it start recording, you can actually enable that. So if you turn it on, swipe down, and go over to this icon here, where it says screen rotate and capture. If you turn it on, then that enables the setting. And you can actually select from you know, default settings, it can be last setting, it can be video, low light, or hyperlapse mode, or you can choose any of your custom settings. And if you want to turn the camera on and not have it auto record, you can actually just hold that red record button to turn it on without recording. Next up are custom presets. These can be really handy if you like to film in a variety of settings and you want to have them saved. So just swipe down, go over to this icon here, and you can have whatever the settings you currently have on the camera saved as a custom setting. You can see that I have one here. And if you want to enable it, you can just go down to this little icon here and you can swipe through and go through the different modes and your custom settings will also be added here at the end. Now you might notice so far that my camera is choosing a vertical or horizontal orientation depending on how the screen is. If I wanna change that, I just wanna swipe down and press on this icon here. So if I have it set to portrait, then no matter what orientation the screen is in, I'll always be shooting in portrait or vertical mode. And now if I tap it again, it can be auto rotate or landscape mode. It'll always be shooting in that landscape or horizontal mode, even if my screen is flipped vertically. And if I have it set to auto rotation, then the screen position dictates the orientation. The next tip is how to get into selfie mode where the camera is facing you so you can see yourself on the screen. There are actually two different ways to do this. So the first is my favorite, which is going over to this joystick here and just triple tapping it. One, two, three. And that will spin the camera around. If I want to spin it the opposite direction, then we go one, two, three. Alternatively, you can come down to this little icon here in the corner and tap that to get the same effect. By the way, a little bonus tip. If your gimbal kind of gets all out of sorts and you want to make everything recentered, go over to that joystick and just double tap it. The next trick is how to use the joystick to either zoom in and out with the camera or change the position of the gimbal. So that all happens with this little section right here. So as it is right now, if I use this little joystick, I can point up with the camera, I can point down, I can point to the right, to the left, or I can double tap to recenter. If I wanna change this over to zoom, then I just wanna tap that section there. And now I can zoom in up to two times or zoom back out. If I want to change it again, I just tap this section here, and now I'm back to changing the position of the gimbal camera. The next tip is how to start up the camera in selfie mode so that the camera is facing you. So by default, if you turn the camera on, the camera wants to face forward, which is how most people want to film. But if you want to change that, just swipe down, go over to this gear icon, and where it says gimbal startup direction, this is forward, you can actually have it say backward instead, or last setting. This is how we start up the camera in selfie mode. So we can start vlogging right away. The next trick is how to have the camera follow you around like you have a camera operator. This is something called active track. So to enable active track, I just wanna come up to the screen and I wanna double tap on the subject. In my case, it's me. You'll see that little green box around my face. And now the camera will track me as I'm moving around. I can go up, down and go from side to side and that active track is going to follow me. If I ever want to cancel it, I just go over to the joystick and just press once. Now you might notice that active track always wants to keep your subject in the middle of the screen. As I'm moving around, I'm always in the middle. But if I want to be off center, then all I have to do is come over to the joystick here and just move the camera a bit. And now you notice that I'm always to the right of the camera. The next trick is changing your settings while recording, which is a pretty neat trick on this camera because most other cameras out there, including your iPhone, do not let you do this. But for this camera, I'm gonna start recording and I can do things like swipe right and I can change my EV or my exposure. I can go brighter, I can go darker, 
or I can leave it just as is. I can also do things like swipe down, change my gimbal modes. I can be in tilt lock or FPV or follow. I can also change the rotational speed. I can change my screen brightness if I want to save some battery. I can even go over to this little left icon here. I can enable face auto detect. I can do dynamic framing, or I can even do a spin shot, all while still filming on the camera. Speaking of gimbal modes, I want to show you a fourth hidden mode. So there are three. If you swipe down, press here, you can see that we have FPV, we've got tilt locked, and we've got follow modes, but there's actually a fourth hidden mode. If I go over to this joystick here, and I press and I hold, now if I move the camera around, it's actually in a locked mode. The next trick is the brand new product showcase mode in which the camera will focus on the subject that it's closest to. So to enable this, swipe right, make sure that you're in pro mode, and go down to focus mode, and select product showcase. The next trick is time codes, which is definitely more of an advanced or professional setting, but it helps you to synchronize audio and video between different cameras or devices. So to enable it, you just want to go over to your menu, swipe down, go to the gear icon, and scroll all the way down until you see time code. So there are two different ways to set your time code. First is to connect the Pocket 3 via USB-C to another device that has time code capability and set your own time code. Or you can have it set to system time, which is how I have it set right here. There's also this option to have the time code display, which is what I have enabled, but you can also turn it off. The next tip is how to smooth out your skin or add photoshopping to your face. So if you wanna do this, you wanna swipe right and make sure that glamour effects is turned on. Now, like the camera says, you do have to connect the camera to the DJI MIMO phone app in order to control glamour effects or even see it. So if you have glamour effects on and you're filming, you won't be able to see that in the video that you're recording. You have to spin it through the DJI MIMO app to even see it. The next few tricks have to do with the DJI Mic 2 transmitter, which right now is only available through the Creator Combo, but this is more than a transmitter. It actually has a few pretty cool tricks up its sleeve. So the first thing you can do with this transmitter is to use it as an external recorder because it has internal eight gigabyte storage, which is about 14 or 15 hours. So to enable it, first turn on the microphone and then go over to the red record button on the side and just press it. Once that red light is on, it means that you're recording audio directly to the transmitter. And you can actually do this even if you're not recording video or audio on the Pocket 3. To offload the audio, just connect the transmitter to a computer or device with the USB-C port. If you ever wanna check how much battery life or recording space is available on the transmitter, just connect it to the camera you can swipe down, go over to the little gear icon, and over to wireless microphone. And here, once the transmitter is connected, you'll notice that it'll show you the amount of battery life left, as well as how much recording time is left on the camera. And since we're here, let's talk about a few other tricks on the Mic 2 transmitter, such as the ability to turn on a low cut filter, as well as enable 32-bit float recording. These are both professional level settings, but they're really nice for audio because low cuts filters help you, help you reduce the amount of help you reduce junk frequencies from your audio recordings, and 32-bit float basically allows you to record a more dynamic range of your audio, so it helps you to preserve that audio in post-production. Another trick you can do is to automatically record backup audio to the transmitter while also filming audio on the Pocket 3. So to do this, you just wanna enable audio to video sync. Final trick up the Mic 2 transmitter sleeve is being able to use it as a remote control for the Pocket 3 camera. So once it's connected to the camera, you can use these buttons on the side to do little things with the camera, such as using this link button here to trigger the shutter on the camera. So right now we're in video mode, so if we press that link button, it'll start recording and even stop recording. And if we go over to photo mode, then that button will take a photo. While in video mode, you can also press on the power button of the transmitter to turn noise reduction off and on. You notice that it's yellow, that means that noise reduction is on. And if we press it again, it goes back to blue, meaning that noise reduction is off. By the way, in this camera setting, you can see that you can control the gain on the transmitter as well as mute the transmitter from this little menu here. So those were 17 tips and tricks for using the DJI Pocket 3. I've already got a Pocket 3 accessories guide out and I'm also working on a settings guide plus a how to use a gimbal video. So stay tuned for those. If you have any questions or ideas for future videos, then please let me know in the comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.